So it's no secret that the DCEU has been looking quite shaky over the last few years. In fact, critic reviews have been plaguing Warner Brothers' superhero universe to the point that it seems if it isn't turned around soon, we may very well be looking at another reboot, and that would bring with it a whole host of retellings and origin stories. Yawn. After the failure of titles like Batman vs Superman and Suicide Squad, it would be easy to feel that the DCEU just doesn't have what it takes to tackle Marvel and produce top quality superhero flicks. At least that was until 2017's Wonder Woman came along and lifted everyone's hopes and started the DCEU down the right path. Enter Justice League, DC's answer to the Avengers and the final DCEU movie from director Zack Snyder. Justice League is a story about hope, friendship and apparently Wonder Woman's ass. No, really, the cameraman seems to just try and stalk the poor woman. Anyways, a lot is riding on the success of Justice League. So is it any good? Yeah. But oh boy does it have some problems. Anyone who's seen any of the trailers will already know that the CGI in this movie is pretty terrible. And I mean really bad. Everything from the ropey environments to Cyborg's armour all look kinda low budget. And the biggest hoop for me was the CGI covering Henry Cavill's moustache, leaving him looking like he's had a series of botched plastic surgeries. The problem with this much green screen work is that in a few years it's going to look even worse, and the movie will age terribly. In addition to the CGI, I felt the story was a bit flat, and it had all sorts of continuity issues with the previous Snyderverse movies. Also, the villain Steppenwolf was so boring and one-dimensional that once he was off camera you literally forgot he even existed. All sounds a bit rubbish, right? Well, that's where I would disagree. You see, about halfway through the movie, predictably, Superman returns. And this is when you see the League in all its glory. The chemistry between the characters is fantastic, and at times I felt like I was watching an episode of Justice League Unlimited, the cartoon series. With all the actors playing their characters brilliantly, I was sold on them, and the gags and quips were very funny. The fights were epic, and I really, really want to see more of this team in action. As with the uh, previous films that they've both been in, I thought both uh, Ben Affleck and Gal Gadot in their respective roles were absolutely brilliant. Uh, especially some of the scenes where Wonder Woman was almost like motherly to the younger League members. It almost felt like she was the glue that sort of bound them together. Uh, and this was a different Batman as well. He wasn't so angry. He was much more, you know, uh, in search of redemption because he kind of felt bad for Superman having died. Ezra Miller's Flash was great. Jason Momoa's Aquaman was more Aqua Bro and could have done with more character than being reduced to muttering black exploitation lines like "My man," or, "I dig it." Strangely, I still really enjoyed his presence in the movie. I have to say though, I got the most fantastic surprise when it came to Cyborg. Actor Ray Fisher was fantastic in the role, and seeing as after seeing the ropey CGI in the trailers I was ready to write him off, it was a welcome surprise to see how integral he was to these, the movie's plot, and also how well Victor Stone was portrayed here. But by far the happiest moment for me was when I realised they finally got Superman right. Not only does he smile, but he actually drops cheeky one-liners, it really gives off the Boy Scout aura that any comic book fan would have expected from the off. There's a scene where Steppenwolf has beaten the crap out of the other League members, and he just tells them, you're too weak to face me. And that's when Superman makes his big entrance and says, how about me, big guy, as he proceeds to smash him through five walls with a single blow. And I was just like, yes, finally, it took fucking four films, but they got it right. So yes, the fanboy in me was screaming like a little girl through the second half of the movie. I have to say that I absolutely love the soundtrack here as well. Danny Elfman did an absolutely sterling job with tributes paid to John Williams' classic Superman score and also incorporating his own Batman theme from the 1989 Batman movie. It felt like the heroes all had a theme of their own. I did feel they should have used the Wonder Woman theme a little bit more though, um, but other than that, the OST was absolutely great and gets a massive thumbs up from us. I found this review really quite hard to try and create. On one hand, I really enjoyed this movie, but on the other, really, I know it can't be called a good movie. Because beyond getting the characters right and having an epic soundtrack, there's not really much of substance here for non-DC Comics fans. I felt the cast was carrying the dead weight of a messy story that wasn't helped by the change of director halfway through production, and there isn't really that much here to praise. But it's fun, and I can't deny that. So the Worth It Dude score for Justice League is... 6.5 out of 10. Great action and characters dragged down by poor story, continuity, and some really dodgy special effects. If I'm honest with you, 
I am happy that Zack Snyder is no longer calling the shots, and I'm quite eager to see what his replacement Joss Whedon can do. I felt I was able to spot the scenes that he had reshot, as the atmosphere was completely different. So I just hope the DCEU can survive this movie not being the box office smash that Warner so desperately needed it to be.